So, ma'am, um, can I take my seat? Um, can you listen? Uh, I Interview laga, interview laga raha Also very suit. Okay. And your entrance, fine. We will discuss. Oh, sure. Oh, I wasn't sure if you. Okay, fine. Tell me about yourself, Abhishek. So my name is Abhishek Kandasu. Um, I was born in Vishakhapatnam, but I've primarily grown up in uh, Chennai and Mumbai. I did my schooling in uh, Chennai, after which I joined IIT Bombay in 2014, where I graduated in electrical engineering. And uh, after graduation, sir, I have uh, been preparing for civil services. My hobbies include uh, participating in debate competitions and learning French. And uh, yes, sir, that's mostly about me. Have you worked somewhere? Pardon, sir? Have you worked somewhere? Uh, I haven't worked, sir. I've done internships in uh, management consultancy and in policy research, but I haven't worked extensively anywhere, sir. Why? You have, uh, you have from IIT Bombay, electrical engineering. Your uh, CGPA is also decent. Yes. You must have got good job offers. I did, sir. So, um, in my uh, third year summer, I was interning with Nomura Research Institute, which is a management consultancy. And uh, while working there, I was also offered a pre-placement offer. But um, during that time, sir, I did realize that um, while the private sector has its merits, I couldn't really find my calling there. Like, it wasn't something that I thought I want to do for the rest of my life. And civil services had a particular allure that I wanted to uh, explore and try and get into. So, in continuation to that, yes, sir. Tell me, like, uh, why do you want to be become a civil servant? Um, so I would answer this at two levels, sir. First, that um, while in university I, I did a lot of debate competitions, and. One thing that kind of struck out to me, sir, is that while in debate, a lot of things we say are in the realm of ideas. And I always wondered, I always wondered to myself, like, if it sounds so simple and plausible in a debate speech, why is it something that we aren't doing in, in, in status quo? And on talking with uh, maybe some of my friends who were involved in the civil services, I realized that there's far more depth and understanding which is required in order for something to be practically feasible. And at a second level, sir, the reason why civil services is that I enjoy the idea of the diversity of roles that one would get to occupy and the magnitude in which one gets to work. So for instance, sir, if one was to look at maybe something as simple as the education budget, like if even over a lifetime, if one was to, uh, it's, it, last year was around 30,000 uh, crores. So in over a lifetime, if one was to even make a marginal improvement of 0.1% or 1%, like even within those ranges, it's the kind of change that perhaps no one would be able, like several hundreds of NGOs put together would not be able to do. So that's primarily where my motivation comes from, sir. So you told about depth and understanding. Yes, sir. So I will put you in one situation. Sure, sir. Uh, suppose assembly elections are happening. Yes, sir. And this is the COVID time. Yes, sir. You are a district election authority. Yes, sir. So, some VVIP, VVIP campaigning will happen. Yes, sir. How will you ensure that COVID norms are followed? COVID norms are followed. Yes, sir. During the time of election campaign by the VVIP. Um, so, um, I would say, sir, this problem is particularly relevant given the election climate uh, that in, uh, in India currently and the news reports of several uh, rallies exceeding uh, COVID regulations. So on that, sir, I would say that probably what I would try and ensure is first that there is a cap on the number of people that can attend a rally subject to how large the space is and how much distance can be maintained. Secondarily, sir, I would, I would probably ensure that individuals that are in attending the rally follow proper guidelines such as wearing of masks and uh, as much as possible maintaining distance between themselves. And thirdly, sir, I would request the VVIPs who are campaigning to uh, 
to make this a part of uh, how they conduct elections and set an example by probably wearing of masks themselves while they're on the dais and while they're addressing the audience. Any else? Anything else? Um, I think that is it for now, sir. Okay. Unless there are any particular issues that I need to address. You could have mentioned about the specific arrangements which you could have like be it at the exit points, entry points. Uh, yes, sir. So probably, uh, so uh, on that side, I would say that at all entry and exit points, thermal monitoring to ensure that nobody with uh, a, an existing illness is attending the rally would be something that can be advocated. Okay. So you are an electrical engineering. Yes, sir. Electrical engineer no? from IIT Bombay. Yes, sir. What is Ohm's law? So uh, according to Ohm's law, uh, when there's a voltage uh, drop across a resistance, the current that flows through it is uh, can be given by uh, V equal to I R, where V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance across the voltage drop. What is electromagnetic induction? Uh, as per the principle of electromagnetic induction, sir, uh, when there is an electromagnetic flux that is uh, present uh, across a cross section cross sectional area. It leads to the induction of a voltage across the ends of that cross section. What is that uh, voltage or force called? Uh, pardon, sir. What is that voltage or force called as? Uh, so that force is called the electromotive force, sir. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So, how is Bitcoin generated? Pardon, Bitcoin. Sir? You are into investment strategy and equities in turn also. You are out. Yes, sir. You, are, you worked as. Yes, sir. How is Bitcoin generated? So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, sir, where the value of the uh, the currency it's a token currency, and it is backed by uh, crypt, uh, by cryptographic technology. So what it means, uh, crypto, uh, what this means, sir, is that uh, the uh, the value of the coin is encoded using cryptographic techniques, and one can earn Bitcoin through techniques such as mining or uh, using it or, or using it as a mode of payment. Okay, do you see, do you bet on gold or Bitcoin as a future source of security? Uh, I would bet on gold sir, as a future uh, future security, primarily because gold has uh, an intrinsic value to it, whereas Bitcoin uh, has been shown to not have a store of value of its own and to not be backed by any physical asset. Why Bitcoin is not having any intrinsic value? Uh, so, so Bitcoin is uh, outside of the value. I would say, sir, a currency derives value from the kind of goods that one can procure using it. The issue I see with Bitcoin, sir, as it is at one level that the num the amount of volatility that Bitcoin sees is far higher than the kind of goods that you want to buy using that Bitcoin. Right, I got it. You you want to say it is more speculative? Yes, sir. So then, how you how do you see this? What what is this editor of Insight student media body? What what is that work you have done? Yes, sir. So uh, uh, Insight is the student uh, is the student media body of IIT Bombay, sir. What we do there is uh, we publish every year newsletters and uh, videos that uh, relate to issues surrounding the campus. So while I was editor, sir, one of the initiatives that I held was uh, an initiative called Lab Radar where the idea behind this sir was that on campus not all the students particularly in undergraduate level are aware of all the kind, various kinds of labs that are present on campus so for instance sir if i am a student of electrical engineering i would not know the kind of labs that are present in the institute of design so our idea was to make videos with the professors that engage with uh, and work on these labs to then demonstrate the kind of work that they do at these labs and what kind of impact that's having on society. Okay, you're familiarizing whatever is not familiar to the particular students of particular branches. Yes, sir. But uh, so, for instance, sir, until I held this initiative, even though I was from electrical engineering, I was not aware that only that one of two nano fabrication units in India is present in IIT Bombay because we don't interact with that with that level of technology as undergrads but to bring that knowledge out to the students means that they can explore what kind of research they would want to do or perhaps talk to professors and learn more from them in their free time. What attracted you to football because India as we were talking yes, sir. just before is a country of cricket. Yes sir. 
What um, attracted you to football? Sir, I started playing football in school, sir. It wasn't a, a choice by design. And I just love the sport, sir. And particularly, I grew up, sir, at, in the age of like probably one of the biggest football rivalries between Lionel Ronaldo. Messi and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. So that really fueled it for me. And to watch maybe players of that caliber play week in, week out was an experience that like really attached me to the sport. What difference you find between football and cricket? Um, generally, generally in terms of sport or in terms of the environment that surrounds them. Uh, in India, sir, or like internationally? In India. In India, sir, I would say the uh, what I find as the primary difference, obviously, sir, is popularity. That cricket has a much greater mass appeal than football. And uh, another difference I would find, uh, I would say, sir, is that uh, that also affects the degree to which um, the marketability also affects the degree to which uh, prospective uh, players or prospective kids who are interested in the sport attracted, pick yeah. up the sport. And then why you are attracted? Why you are attracted to football when it is not so famous in India? Are you are you ready to go against the tide? Uh, General, whatever is family, whatever is popular in all, you are always ready for that. Um, I am not. I wouldn't say football is not popular, sir. It is particularly popular amongst the youth. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that I'm going against any particular tide. But uh, it is, in terms of popularity, it does come secondary to a sport like cricket. Good. Thank you. Sure, sir. Yeah, hi. Yes, sir. Abhishek. Yes, sir. Abhishek, you have a really interesting profile regarding your hobbies and extracurriculars. Yes, sir. So when did you participate in World Universities Debating Championship? Uh, this was in 2016, sir. I had uh, this was in Thessaloniki in Greece, and uh, yes, sir. So uh, we were uh, based on our performance in the in the domestic circuit and in Asia. We were offered a slot to participate in the World Universities Debating Championship, and so I went there to represent India and IIT Bombay. Sir. So have you guys won? Uh, we didn't win, sir. We were the highest uh, rank. We were joint highest ranking Indian team. Uh, on the, uh, the that year, so in order to break into the octo finals, we would have needed 13 points out of uh, 13 points, and we finished on 11, which was the highest by an Indian team. Till now. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Sir. So, what was there any uh, debating topic there? Uh, yes, sir. So, um, one topic was uh, on the idea of uh, whether this house believes that the usage of mercenaries in order to conduct combat operations is uh, ethical. So what was your stand? Uh, so the stand is given to us, sir. We are not, uh, uh, the in a debate competition, you are assigned roles. And your job is to defend that role to the best of your ability. So what was your role to defend? Yes, sir. Our role to defend was as gov uh, we, we were closing government, which meant that we had to defend uh, the role of mercenaries. So you have to defend the ethicality. Yes, sir, of mercenaries. So, sir, there my our lines of argument, sir, were first that uh, the television of war has changed the dynamic of war completely. So, if one was to look at uh, the dynamics of war that existed in 1962 versus maybe the Kargil War, or like the U.S. equivalent would be the Vietnam War, the existence of televised uh, proceedings of war has changed how the calculus uh, of those. Uh, and the geo geo geopolitics of it has completely changed. So for instance, sir, when there's a televised image of body bags arriving home, that has a very visceral impact on the masses and therefore changes what uh, strategic depth you have. So mercenaries are therefore a bit more ex expendable and therefore serve as a much better resource for war. Okay, so uh, do you think we have fabrication units in the country? Uh, of electronic devices. So for research fabrication uh, fabrication units, there are two, sir, in India, which is at IIT Bombay and at IISC. No, for, for the industrial production. Uh, for industrial production, yes, sir. Like at a research level, they exist, sir. But at a uh, at a larger scale, at industrial level, the fabrication. Does India provide? I mean, does India manufacture electronics, or it does import various component parts, assemble and sell? Uh, so largely, I would say, sir, currently India is assembling. 
So right now, if one was to look at uh, India's import dependence for its uh, electronics manufacturing, it's so around 65%. What do we need to increase the manufacturing? Yeah. Yes, sir. So I would say first, if one was to diagnose the problems with manufacturing, I would say first that the uh, there's a lack of uh, high value chain uh, 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 value addition. So uh, uh, in general, for starters, the research environment for fabrication is lacking. So why, I would. Why, do, why are we not taking up uh, uh, fabrication units in the country? Uh, because so, there is huge. Yes, huge sir. So, so the reason, yes, sir. So it's nearly a 400 billion dollar market, sir. So I would say that the reasons why is because um, the fabric, like fabrication is a very dynamic industry. So the amount, the uh, fabrication methods and the specifications of fabrication change nearly every 12 to, uh, 12 to 14 months. So that amount of capex which is needed and the, and the accompanying research facilities which are needed in order to keep up with the times are both absent in India. Okay, so you, you have been offered uh, Nanyang Technological University Scholarship in uh, Singapore, it seems. Uh, not a scholarship, sir. It was a semester exchange. exchange. So yeah, you were but with Singapore. Yes, sir. For how many months or weeks? Uh, this was for for one semester, sir. For five months. Five months you were there. Yes, sir. So who was the architect of Singapore? Um, uh, architect in uh, a literal sense, or sir, the broader sense of who helped Singapore to where it is today. Yes, yes. So I would say, sir, Lee Kuan Yew has had as the first premier has had a lasting impact on how Singapore was constructed and built from a third world power that gained independence in 1965 to where it is today. A lot of the credit for that goes to Lee Kuan Yew, sir. So are you aware of the crisis of tiger economies? Pardon, sir? Are you aware of the crisis of tiger economies? Oh, uh, no, sir. Of Southeast Asia? Uh, tiger economies. Tiger economies. So, uh, so tiger economies have, uh, I, I'll attempt this to the best of my knowledge, sir. I would say that tiger, uh, tiger economies have prioritized low cost manufacturing uh, you know, and uh, focused on positioning themselves as export economies in order to leverage the benefits of a globalizing world. Have you ever felt a person in need in your life? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Uh, so while at IIT Bombay, sir, there was an initiative called Abhyasika. Uh, so I did uh, two things for Abhyasika, sir. First was as a volunteer, I taught students uh, living in the peripheries of Pawai, uh, maths and uh, science at, a se at an 7th and 8th standard level. And also then, sir, Abhyasika then needed more uh, volunteers because they were short of volunteers. So what I did then, sir, I, in my role as editor of Insight, I wrote a piece highlighting the kind of work that Abhyasika does and the call for volunteers. So what was your role in uh, National Health Mission budget briefing? Uh, so, uh, this was during my uh, stint at uh, Center for Policy Research, sir, where, uh, so the last, uh, what the budget briefs aim to do is serve as a policy document for the so uh, budget session. Role? Yes, sir. So, what I did there, sir, is I did a lot of the research and uh, analysis from uh, the budget, docu budget documents related to the National Health Mission and compiled them into that publication, sir. Yes. Sir. Can you throw some light on IO ARC or IORC or IOARC um, with respect to IR and blue economy? Uh, is this, uh, I'm not entirely sure, ma'am, but is this related to the Indian Ocean yes, Rim yes, Association? Yes, yes. Yes, yes ma'am. So uh, the uh, what I understand from this, ma'am, is that uh, India aims to capitalize on its historical ties with both uh, Southeast Asia and uh, East African nations in order to uh, establish both trade and cultural ties uh, through the existence of uh, these institutions such as I I IORA. Is India a member in IORA? Uh, yes, ma'am. India is a member. So you are you studied you were schooling in Vishakhapatnam or you were born in Vishakhapatnam? I was born in Vishakhapatnam. Can you speak whether you really support privatization of Vishakhapatnam Steel Plant? Um, Ma'am, I don't support the privatization of Vishakhapatnam Steel Plant because uh, I feel that Vishakhapatnam, for a few different reasons, ma'am. First, that Vishakhapatnam Steel Plant has shown to be profitable until 2015. Secondarily, that uh, 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 that Vishakhapatnam steel plant has also had a multitude of effects 
on uh, Vishakhapatnam and its peripheral areas. So for instance, ma'am, the per capita GDP of the area surrounding the plant are, are one of the highest in the country and that it has also led to uh, a, a large scale em uh, employment within the area. And thirdly, that there's also a large sentimental attachment that a lot of the residents feel because of its association with the Jayandra movement. And so I feel that uh, a lot of these benefits uh, will continue to accrue. And therefore, uh, it, a way forward for this could be something like monetizing its land assets or figuring out a way to reduce its debt burden so that it can operate more sustainably. Abhishek? Yes. My question is almost an extension to Madam's question. Yes, sir. You are from Nathra and Andhra Pradesh. Um, you said Patna. I'm, I was born there, sir, but I've primarily grown up in Chennai and Mumbai. Sir. Okay. So, what is the. I'll give you a little background to my question. Yes, sir. There is a general uh, understanding that. 19th century was the century of uh, England. Yes, sir. 20th century, after Second World War, was the century of US. Yes. 21st century is going to be century of Asia. Yes, sir. Particularly China and India. Yes, sir. My statement is, if 21st century is going to be a century of India and China, what is the potential of uh, Northern Andhra Pradesh in a global economy. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think, sir, one of the benefits of uh, that Andhra Pradesh would accrue, sir, Northern Andhra Pradesh in particular, sir, would accrue is through uh, the existence of a coast, particularly of a major port. Uh, the benefits that uh, uh, with the even though globalization sir has seen a bit of uh, a, a threat in these in the recent times that trade and particularly integrated trade will continue to remain a priority for the globalized world and I can see that by capitalizing on the idea of port led development northern Andhra Pradesh can uh, be really benefit. Your expression is extremely, extremely exemplary because of your background of having participated in debating competitions yes, and all. It's very good. Uh, you're very good with your domain knowledge also. Yes, sir. Which is a good thing. Don't clench your hands. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, as was earlier pointed out, it's Rajesh. Yes, sir. Try to learn from the inputs of others also. Yes, sir. Okay. Have the developed the habits. Um, is this okay, yeah, sir? Yeah, that, that, is, that is perfect. Sure. Sure. You use your hands for gestures. Okay, sir. Get it back. Yes, sir. Sir, comfortably. What was the issue? Can you delete okay. it comfortably? Sure, sir. That will be yeah. the most comfortable yes. and most neutral position to okay, show yourself off. Sure, okay. And uh, your knowledge is really, really good. Your work for uh, Singapore is really nice. And uh, I think uh, there are few points you can improve upon. Yes, sir. You you tend to elaborate more than required. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, you just uh, you just you're just going on. So hmm. cut it down. Yes, be sir. more crisper. Yes, sir. Lay your answer hmm. so that you try to put up so many points and very relevant information as expected of you of yes, the question. Sir. In very few, as few words as possible. Um, uh, could I please have one example, sir, that maybe I could have done a bit you better? Not anything. Yes, For sir. example, I was asking about your role in uh, budget. Yes, sir. Uh, budget briefing of NHS. Yes, sir. So the question was straight. Yes, sir. And you started going on what is being, what was done as a team. Okay, sir. I had to stop you and then ask yes, you. Yes, sir. Correct. Sir. What was your role? Yes, sir. Okay. So that is so when when I asked you what was your role, then I can elaborate on that. The time is limited. Isn't yes, sir. It? So I that is an opportunity there for you. Yes, sir. Have you worked, being, having worked there, hmm. so you're tending yourself an opportunity. Had you tried to jump into yes, that, sir. would have elaborated and would have exported a little bit. Yes, sir. That would have added to your mark a little bit. Yes, sir. So these are all the little loose ends which you can uh, cover. Yes, sir. Otherwise, I think you stand a really good chance. Okay, yes, all the best Thank wishes. You. Thank you, sir. So your DAF is your strength, like I uh, earlier also told. Yes, sir. Very diverse. So your experience is also in be it during IIT or be it before and later also. Yes. Sir. So, 
your communication skills are very good posture has already pointed out kindly yes, with that whenever you are entering so don't come here and then say like what i would suggest whenever you are entering yes sir so just aside the chair just beside okay. the chair you could just pause for a while greet all the members then automatically the chairman will say kindly yes, take sir. your seat yes sir just beside the chair okay. just pause for a while yes sir greet all the members then when the chairperson will automatically say yes, kindly sir. take a seat then you should take the seat yes sir your dressing needs to be like corrected so yes, can sir. we ensure that yes sir i'll practice your mocks with the suit yeah sure sir. because don't wear a suit at the d day yes sir that, that that doesn't really make you feel comfortable correct sir. so your body language your ease yes, everything sir. matters when you're answering you can't be just pulling here and there and then answering questions yes, isn't it and as rajesh pointed out the way you have to come in the way you pause the way you wish the way you take a pause again yes sir waiting for the chairman or any other member to open the seat yes, then sir. telling thank you having seated yes so sir. everything needs to go in a seamless manner sure, sure. shouldn't appear that there is some that is being made out yes, should appear sir. that that's how that has been um, inculcated into you earlier so do practice it sure, should sure. you go to other mocks when you are there in the home just imagine that this is a interview room and how you enter how you are going to pause how to be like an automatic yes sir okay sure sir best wishes Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. subject extreme good but when you are telling when you are explaining too much like jayandra movement for visakavakku it yes, is not sir. that it is a separate movement uh, okay sir it is not jayandra movement visakavakku visaka andrula akku is a separate movement okay it's a different movement yes, so when you are explaining too much these errors come out okay, so that's one thing and you are informal but informality when it crosses the limit that what you uh, sorry stay yes. you are just coming and standing there near the chair yes, that sort of you, the informality yes, depending upon the situation yes sir. the uh, content uh, the aspect of that and uh, last I, i i should not ask a question but i want to know one thing yes, you are an urban guy yes sir basically you are all through an urban guy yes sir i want to know how do you see the agricultural laws Uh, three farm laws. Yes, sir. So just once one one yes yes you like it or not? Um, I like the idea behind it, sir. But uh, there are definitely shortcomings that need correction. Okay. And just I want to know so because that is a yes, rural sir. issue. Do whether you are you having a grasp of it or yes, not? Yes, sir. Good. It's good. Anything? Okay.